glorious day in the world of Magic the Gathering, as the complete Brothers War set has just been revealed. And that means that we can move from looking at digital cards into the realm of looking at physical cards. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends! I hope the day finds you well, and if it doesn't, this video will help you to feel well. Because we are here for the hype experience of cracking into a Brothers War pre-release kit, and I am at maximal excitement. If you need a break from the bad news going on in Magic, well kick back because it's nothing but good times here. The good news is that Wizards of the Coast has faithfully recreated the Brothers War story in these cards. I'm mega hyped about it. In fact, we are going to be doing a wheel stream celebrating the Brothers War tonight on my other YouTube channel opening a whole bunch of packs. I got set boosters, some other stuff I'm not going to talk about. You have to be there to see it. So with that out of the way, let us dive in and and see what's inside Urza's pre-release kit. I can't wait! Well, would you look at that? There's actually two pre-release kits here. That's weird. I guess this means that tomorrow we're gonna have to open up Mishra's. But for today, we are doing Urza's Iron Alliance. Let us soak in the artwork to start with. Let us enjoy every little aspect. You've got the constructs, right? Actually, you know what? I suppose I can show you that since I have both of these. I didn't think about that. These go together to form one gigantic piece of artwork. See how this was all finished? Boom. You've got Urza and the red of the Might Stone. You've got Mishra and the green of the Weak Stone. The flavor is great, but we'll look more at this tomorrow. Now, let's take a look at Urza's Construct Forces. Dun dun dun, and you can see, regardless of what side you're on, the world is ruined. They messed things up hardcore. Look at that, man. I have to say, the Constructs this time around, they really do feel bigger and more impressive than the original ones that we got from Antiquities. Now, let's get inside. I am so hyped about this. The Hads, whoa, this is like, oh, no, no wonder. I was like, why is it so strong? It's because I'm so eager to get in, I'm literally tearing the box apart. Get your gears turning. Too late, they already are wizards. Oh, okay. Boom, look at that. It's got like this furnace, furnace forge kind of power stone vibe and almost like an open mouth with an eye. Oh, this is sick, that red glow. That's great. I still don't know what to do with these little insert cards, but they look nice. And in this case, we're getting plus one, plus one counters and gear counters. Cool. Yeah, man. I'm down. I'm here for this. Okay. Is there anything inside? Let's crack it open and look. Oh, haste makes destruction. Okay. It's the same thing. It's that same picture from the back, right? Okay. A little bit smaller. I did admittedly rip it. I don't know if there would be if there's an easier way to do it, but whatever, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see. Here we go. Look at this. Yeah, coming to get some. Who wants to arm wrestle, son? You can cut some hot dogs. Cook some hot dogs in my belly and we'll arm wrestle. Do you like Transformers? Beep boop. Okay, let's go. What do we got inside? What are the flavor inserts like? This is what I'm super stoked about. What is on here? I wanted to see this the most. Okay, what is it? It is Urza's Iron Alliance. Get your gears turning. Oh, dude, check it out. They're doing it in the old WW style posters. This is funky. This looks like a movie, bro. You've got Urza. You've got his legions down here. You've got the flying squad. This looks intense. I love these little, I, I keep all these inserts, guys, that come with these pre-release kits. I mean, I don't get to, I don't get to keep this stuff because it belongs to the game store, but ultimately I always keep one of these from every pre-release I go to. So when I go to the pre-release next week, my one of these, I I will definitely put it with the rest. This is awesome. All right, and then you get your little divider. I wonder if um, I wonder if Mishra's has the same sort of setup, or if it's just Urza's that has this artwork. And right out of the gates, we've got our promo. It's hostile negotiations. 
Okay, so Hostile Negotiations is one black and three. Exile the top three cards of your library in a, in a face-down pile. Then exile the top three cards of your library in another face-down pile. Look at the cards in each pile. Then turn a pile of your choice face up. An opponent chooses one of those piles. Put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. You lose three life. This is a very weird variation of fact or fiction style, but it's done with the black color instead of blue. So that's a little bit strange to me. I do enjoy the whole like, let's see if you can psychologically trick your opponent. Which pile is worse? Is the pile that's face down better than the pile that you're looking at? So that part of it is fun. And I also enjoy the fact that this is a story spotlight the hostile negotiations. This is essentially the moment in the story, if I'm not mistaken, where the warlord of Krug has betrayed the peace meeting they've gone to, and they're getting into this big argument, and the warlord's like, let me show you the meaning of power. And then he sends a bunch of ornithopters off, and they start wrecking civilians and, and troops alike. It's wild. If you don't know the Brothers War story and you want to know whole, the whole thing, I have five hours of lore videos on my channel's Fantasy Geographic going through the whole thing so you can see it's literally going down in action story spotlight what a nice card to get as the promo you know what actually let's take a look at the um the token insert as well while we're at it oh this is awesome bro i am super hyped all right then we've got a code for the pre-release packs and plus one plus one counters and gears they are oh prototype prototype counters oh okay you know what? maybe we'll get a prototype card so we can take a look and discuss what that actually is and also look at this look at the color of this die this is awesome the set symbol oh come on man the set symbol looks so cool you've got the like gear with the slash through it like it's just been cut and is falling apart I dig it, man, and the colors on this are great. You've got that noxious vibe of a corrupted world with the black and green just smoking miasma. Yes, man. And like the also the idea of green underneath the black is like the verdancy of nature that is covered by the soot and destruction. Boys, if you thought I took a long time to talk about what's wrong with magic, see how long I take to talk when it's something I love. This is amazing. All right, you ready? You ready to get into the booster pack? with this little this is not uh this is not big hero six this is big slap you six what do we got in this are these uh these are north american prints okay these are not japanese boosters so the rares and stuff will be at the back so we've got a perimeter patrol um like for me a lot of the stuff i'm super hyped about the brothers war stuff but i also like this outer stuff because the flavor text says the phalagi quickly learned that the care ridges held too many caves and valleys to be surveyed from air alone so these little details are nice and the phalagi actually play a huge role in the brothers war story so having them represented in a bunch of cards is awesome in terms of the cards power it's three mana for a three three whenever an artifact comes into control under your control you get plus one power to lend a turn it's like okay i mean troops are getting strong because you got artifacts not super exciting but it's got some flavor then you've got Gixian Skull Flare. This is wild. One black and two for a Phyrexian Human Assassin. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And it says, with every culling, we bring this world closer to completion. Now, this is like... I think what's happened with this story is that Teferi went back in time and he actually introduced the concept of magic a little bit earlier or Wizards of the Coast is just taking more creative license because the Gixian priests and stuff that existed in the original story weren't on this level, but this is far more exciting. So this doesn't take away as far as I'm concerned. This is just enhancing. And I really do wonder if the original story was going to be Teferi goes back and meddles with the timeline by introducing magic magic earlier that's a cool concept then we've got survivor of corliss corliss was just completely devastated one white one one pay one white and one uh exile it from your graveyard to scry to it's got first strike and the flavor text says at first the merchant state of corliss saw no need to involve itself in the conflict between yosha and, yosha and the phalagi mishra's dragon engines changed that it's like yeah when he shows up and levels your city and it's just like oh uh yeah we're just kind of hiring mercenaries and hanging out in the middle but we're getting into the thick of it now the artwork shows i mean somebody's like i ain't taking it i ain't dealing with your construct nonsense so that works then we've got urza's rebuff two blue and one 
and it's an instant. Choose one, counter target spell, or tap up to two target creatures. And it says, as usual, my brother's maneuvers are brash and impulsive. And yeah, that is how Urza did view his brother, so that is definitely accurate. Now, in terms of it, like, tapping creatures, you know, spearing them up on there, that's fine. I'm not sure exactly how this would counter a spell, and so this is part of what makes me lean into, is it supposed to be magic as learned earlier? Although at the same time, Urza didn't really believe in magic too, so I don't know. Either way, this one's a little flavor-wise, it's muddy, but concept-wise, you can see it's literally, I'm going to rebuff your troops with my particular defenses. So the flavor is still there. Then we've got Sibling Rivalry. Oh, this is a story highlight. So one red and three. Gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until end of turn. And you make a Power Stone token. Big Power Stone theme in this set, which makes sense. Power Stones are a big part of the Brothers' War. And this actually represents a moment where Urza is trying to infuse this statue at the same time, well not statue, but construct, at the same time that Mishra is trying to weaken it. And ultimately it becomes too much for this. And it blows apart. This thing, a few moments later, will explode into fragments and just its legs will be standing there while it's smoking. Crazy. Awesome. I love the whole red-green interplay. Urza, Mishra, I can't get enough of this, man. All right, then we've got Weak Stone's Subjugation. One blue enchantment, enchant artifact or creature. When it enters the battlefield, you can pay three. If you do, tap enchant a permanent. Enchant a permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. This is amazing flavor. This shows Mishra standing there with the Weak Stone, using it to bind a construct and weaken it. This is pretty much perfection when it comes to the story. This is great flavor-wise. It's great visually. It is a home run. After that, we've got Evolving Wilds. Look at this. The world is just burning. This is so intense. If you haven't seen the high-res up-close artwork of this, this is absolutely gorgeous. Everybody knows what Evolving Wilds does. I'm not even going to bother to say it. We got Overwhelming Remorse next. Oh, come on. What are, what are you doing? Focus up on the cards, not the packs in the background. All right. Overwhelming Remorse. One black and four instant. The spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your graveyard. Exile target creature or planeswalker. It says, Takesha's face haunted his vision. The explosion still rung in his ears. Mishra kept running and never once looked back. Oh, dude, this is the moment. Oh, if you guys don't know the Power Stone, there's this battle between Urza and Mishra. And Takesha gets in the middle trying to stop them. But it costs her her life. And so Urza is there holding the bottom body of Takesia, and Takesia's basically their mother. Their mother didn't want them, kicked them out of their home, turned them into orphans as their father was dying to steal the family fortune. And Takesia took them in and guided them and cared for them. They were a family together and trying to stop them from fighting cost her her life and Urza's looking up at Mishra with all this grief and just anger. He just looks at him bitterly and Mishra can't handle it, right? He sees like Mishra is the one who came to Urza's house that night. Mishra is the one responsible for this. This is when he flees into the desert and from this point onwards, the rift between Urza and Mishra is almost unmet. They could have gone back from this point, but this is a huge turning point in the story and such an incredible moment. And guys, I hadn't seen this card until now. It legit gets an emotional reaction from me. I love this so much. Look at the artwork. You've got, he's just booking it, man. He just has to go. Oh, yes. Oh, so good. All right, then you've got Lauren's Escape. This is one white instant. Target artifact or creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Scry one. The flavor text says, As Teresia's city burned, Felden pressed the Silex into Lauren's hand and urged her to run. Hope ran with her. That is a short way of saying what happened, but this is exactly what happened. Lauren doesn't believe in the power of the Silex. She doesn't believe in using artifacts. And as a result, Felden thinks that it's safe to give her the Silex because she she won't try and activate it. She never tried to learn magic, so she doesn't have the capability to use the Silex. But Lauren has touched the Silex. She understands how incredibly powerful and dangerous it is. So this is her fleeing with the Silex as the city she's in is burning and scholars are dying all around her. And you can see in the artwork, like she's in a tunnel underground. So honestly, this part, like, 
I mean, I don't think that this really happened, but this is way more intense than showing her in a tunnel. Showing her running while the towers are burning and it's raining down, and she's got the si like she didn't hold the silex out in the open either. But this is all artistic license, and I accept that because it makes the moment way more epic. Nitpicking, going, it should have been in a burlap sack, and she should have been in a tunnel. It's like, yeah, well, if she's in the tunnel, maybe there wasn't even any light, and she was crawling along, so maybe the whole card should be just a big black square, right? So I don't know what level for you guys it needs to be, but for me, these cards are home runs. This is incredible. I can't believe this. All right, then we've got a Su Chi cave guard. They really upped the way the Su Chis look and made them way more intense. Eight mana, eight, eight vigilance, ward four. Wow. Okay, when it dies, add eight colorless. Oh, cool. They kept the hole when Su Chi goes. It gives you mana. Yeah, this has got a Su Chi vibe. And look at the artwork, man. It's massive. People are leaping back. Dude, these are some seriously cool constructs. Right on. Then we've got Levitating Statue, two mana flying. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Two mana, it becomes a one, one construct artifact until end of turn. All right. It's like a, a mage statue, I guess. I, uh, I don't know. This feels like artwork that they must, they must have just had kicking around and decided to use for the Brothers War. If you guys didn't know that, sometimes they have artwork that they paid for for previous stuff and they just go, use some of that in this set to save costs. And that's kind of what this feels like because I, I never heard anything about a lev levitating statue. Uh, Keeper of the Cadence. Okay, come on now. Keeper of the Focus, son. Come on! Get out of here! Get yeah. Can we do it? There we go. Keeper of the Cadence. Five mana, two, five. Human wizard. Three, put target artifact, instant, or sorcery card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. What you call magic, I call the power of memory. So this is another one that makes me feel like Teferi introduced magic early. And bro, look at how insane this artwork is. This magic flowing out of this wizard, all these different components flying around him, that's awesome. Honestly, it looks to me like he pulled something apart. It looks like he walked up to a construct and yanked it apart with magic. I really dig the vibe on this. Uh, after that, we've got, oh, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. I was hoping we'd get a prototype, friends. Seven mana, seven, five. It's got prototypes, so you can cast it for this casting cost instead. If you do, it's a three, three instead of a seven, five. So prototype means pay this casting cost, use this base power and toughness, but you still get all the abilities. So it's either a three, three for three or a seven, five for seven, and it's got Menace, Life Link, and Ward. Pay life equal to Phyrexian Flesh Gorger's power. This thing's insane. Like this, this this was never there in the original Brothers War that we saw. If it was, like, I would have liked to have heard about it, but that's fine. I like the extra details of insane constructs, and this is so over the top and really, really powerful as well. All right, then we've got a spring leaf drum done in the old, like, border. This is the mystic archive that they've done for this. So it's a one-mana artifact. Tap an untapped creature you control. Add a mana of any color. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a merfolk drum. So it's an artifact, but it doesn't do anything for me, Brothers War style. Then we've got a foil hulking metamorph, another prototype. Nine mana, seven, seven, or prototype it for four mana as a three, three. And it enters the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or creature you control, except its power and toughness are this guy's power and toughness. So that's all right. And the artwork is a big old crazy construct with magic flowing off it, looking pretty insane. And then we've got a soul, wow. That's a construct soldier token with like a superheated flame arm blade. That is awesome, bro. That is a nutty looking colorless token. Okay, so that was pack number one. Woo, okay, uh, yeah guys, settle in apparently because I got a lot to say. Oh, we already saw you. And we already saw you. And we already saw you. And we already saw you. Uh, okay, so, Gnarl Root Pallbearer, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five, Trample, enters the battlefield, the creature gets plus X, plus X, till end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. The flavor text says, the flames of war consumed most of Argos, Argos tree folk, vengeance consumed the rest. So this is one of the tree folk who, in the end of the story, end up as part of strike forces that just end up, like, kicking the crap out of Urza's son Harbin's forces until they realize, yo, 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 wait a minute, these tree folk dudes, they burn just as good as every other word, light them up! And then the tree folk were done for. So it didn't it didn't go well for them. This guy burned real well. 
Then we've got Disfigure, a slightly confusing card. One black for an instant that gives target creature minus two, minus two to land a turn. And the flavor text says, with the snap of metal like a strike of lightning, the tide of war shifted in Mishra's favor. So clearly the idea is like, check it out. This is, things are going well for Mishra. The only problem I have is the artwork shows a dragon engine that looks like it's being destroyed. You look at the way its arms are being rent and the way it's like bodies being busted apart. You can go, no, it's the dragon engine biting this or whatever, or it's the dragon engine getting disfigured. But it's like, but the dragon engines were on Mishra's side. So why do you have Mishra's force being like destroyed while you have talking about Mishra's victory. It's This doesn't add up. This one is a flavor loss for me, and it feels like a last second change to what this card was going to be. Then we've got Epic Confrontation. One green and one sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. And then the flavor text says, you've let yourself grow old and your light is dimming. Shall we talk one last time, or shall I slay you now? So intense, bro. This is like, remember, we start the story with these guys as 10 year olds. Now, this is, they're supposed to be this age. Urz is an old man, he's in his 60s. Mishra's supposed to be in his 60s too, but he's been converted into a Phyrexian at this point. You can see it in his arms, in his rib cage and everything like this. Look at all the noxious fumes around him. Look at the energy and action that he's moving with Ford while Urza has this like steady staying forward kind of standing still pose. I love it. This is awesome. Such an, such an epic piece of artwork. So good. All right. Then we've got Fog of War. One green and two for an instant that says, you gain one life for each creature on the battlefield. Prevent all combat damage will be dealt this turn by creatures with power three or less. Flavor text says, so thick was the fog on Argos shore that the brothers' forces passed within shouting distance of each other without realizing it. I like this, man. This is cool. You can see all the constructs and everything. Although you look at the fog and it's like, they're clanking along. How do you really miss each other, right? After that, we've got Energy Refractor. Two mana artifact, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Two colorless, add one mana of any color. Flavor text says, raw energy contains infinite possibility. And that's a quote attributed to Urza. So this is just some sort of device that takes power stone energy and converts it into different colors of power stone energy, which explains why the prototypes can use uh, like different colors of mana in their casting, I guess. Then we've got... Power Stone Engineer, one white and one for a 2-1 human artificer. When he dies, create a tap Power Stone token. Flavor text says, well, there's your problem. Resonance leak lowering output by 30%. I can patch that up. And there he is working on a Power Stone. I mean, Power Stone Engineers, there would have been a ton of these running around in Urza's day. So that makes sense to me. It's not like super exciting, but it does add to the flavor. Then we've got a construct that is a Falaji dragon engine. Oh, the flying kind. Cool. They talked about this in the story. So eight mana for a five, five. It's got uh, flying. It's eight. Oh, no, sorry. It's two. And it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. And it's got prototype for a red and two. You can make it a one, three. Oh, you can make it a one, three like the original dragon engines were. Oh, that's a nice nod to original dragon engines. Along with the plus plus one plus zero pay two mana to pump it yeah bro it li if you oh it really does feel like just a flying original dragon engine in terms of the mechanics yes that's awesome and it looks like a cobbled together flying dragon engine because you have to understand the dragon engine that mishra brought from phyrexia was completely different it was a living phyrexian these are cobbled together versions see how it doesn't have the phyrexian creature type or anything that's cool all right, after that, we've got Sky Fisher Spider. One green, one black, and two for a 3-3 three, three with reach. When it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. When it dies, you can gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, exile this from your graveyard. So it's like, all right, this is just some spider that existed during the Brothers' War. And uh, yeah. Okay, it's big and scary, but it doesn't do anything for me because it's not tied into the story. Then we've got Slagstone Refinery, four mana artifact. Whenever it or another non-token artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield or put into the exile from battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. So this just lets you create crazy amounts of Power Stones, which, I mean, the brothers couldn't really create Power Stones, but I guess if you're, like, refining, like, the Falaji lands, like, digging them up, whatever. They're taking some license with it. Yeah, it's all right. Then the rare is 
Hall of Tagsern, the land. Tap for one, one and tap, add one mana of any color. Four and tap, create a tapped Power Stone token. The Thran's machines were not dead after all, merely dormant and waiting. Bro, a land that generates Power Stone tokens. And it's the Hall of Tagsern. Look at it, look at it. It's so awesome, this is awesome. All right, then we've got Self Assembler. This is five mana, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, you can search, oh, this thing is terrible. I don't like this card. It's when you search your library for an assembly worker, reveal it just tutors for uh, whatever. I mean, at least it feels like it fits into the Brothers War. There's that. And then the token is a Power Stone. Wow, look at how intense that is. That's crazy. That's, cr oh, wait a minute. The camera's about to run out of batteries. Isn't it? Hold on, I'll be right back and we'll get to the next pack. All right, we're back. Let's get into the next pack, man. I've had to wait. It's been sitting over by the side going, come on, come on. I want to get back to it like a kid of Christmas. All right, what do we got here? We've got Curate. One blue and one instant. Surveil for two. Look at the top two cards of your library. And, uh, oh, I mean, why am I explaining Surveil to you? Draw a card. Flavor text says, aha, this must be one of the ancient keys to. No, wait, it's just another puzzle toy. All right, that one's okay. Okay, then we've got Penragon Stronghold, Strong Bull, I should say. One red and two for a two, three Minotaur. Pay one red, or one. Good Lord, what happened? What happened? Maybe I need a battery recharge. My brain is broken. All right, one colorless. Sack an artifact. Penragon Strong Bull gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and deals one damage to each opponent. That's, uh, I guess, pretty underwhelming. But the artwork, I mean, he's going to, he's just going to, wait, what's going on? Why are there people in... Oh, it's just a... Uh, for a second there, I thought, are these, is he flinging these people? But it's just to show how strong he is. What a fun little ride. All right, come on down to the day of the Brothers' War where a strong bull will carry you around in a bucket. Then we've got... Oh, Thanos is tinkering. Yeah, all right. One green and three for an instant. Put two plus one plus one counters on target artifact, creature, or land you control. Untap that permanent. If it isn't a creature, it becomes a zero zero creature in addition to its other types. That's funky. You can turn artifacts or lands into creatures or just boost a creature. Thanos basically studies the living to make his constructs and, and his toys. So... The flavor text says, while his master tried to surpass nature, Thanos aimed to capture its beauty. That's true. Thanos did like to make realistic like birds and snakes and stuff. So that's neat. I like that. And showing him here with the snake, that's actually how he got Urza's attention originally was through the use of one of his little toy snakes. Then we've got Dredging Claw. This is a two casting cost piece of equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has menace. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard, you may attach Dredging Claw to it. Okay, and it equips for black and one. So, it's fine. If you're bringing by guys back, good lord, what happened to me? Okay, if you're bringing guys back with Unearth, then you'll be able to use things like this. But ultimately, eh, the artwork's funky, but the card doesn't excite me. Then we've got Aeronaut Cavalry, 5 mana, 3, 4 flyer, when it enters the battlefield, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on another soldier, and the ground is where wars are raged, waged, but the air is where they're won, and that's Harbin the Vanguard Aviator, so it's a flavor text from Urza's kid, but an underwhelming card, let's be real. We've got 3rd Path Savant, 3 mana for a 2, 3, 7 mana, draw 2 cards, old human wizard. Uh, as Mishra's army bore down on Teresia City, Corlo felt his focus, his patience, and his willpower twined together. With a deep breath, he plucked answers from the air. So yeah, to me, this says that like Teferi must have gone back in this storyline and brought magic in earlier because n none of the none of the people studying there had these magical capabilities, right? When Mishra's army first showed up, nobody had magic. The only one who was really capable of doing it at all was Hercule. So this is definitely a divergence. Then we've got Mine Worker. This is two mana for an artifact creature assembly worker. Tap it to gain a life. If you control creatures named Power Plant Worker and Tower Worker, you gain three life instead. That's fun. So they have the original Urza Tron lands, and now they have Tron creatures that give you three of something instead of one if you have the combo. All right. Following the hunger for knowledge and power from the past, Urza starved Dominaria's future. I mean, yeah, let's be real. Him and Mishra definitely hosed Dominaria hard, son. But I guess they made little Wally robots beep boop, so that's fun, huh? 
Then we've got Scrapwork Cohort, four mana soldier. He's 3-1 and he's got an Earth for a white and two. Oh, that's different. Just like straight up white on Earth feels weird, right? Because it's like normally Grixis style. All right, I mean, it's nothing to write a letter to your mother home about. Then we've got Scrapwork Rager, four mana 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card and lose one life. Oh, it's a... Uh, it's an art. Oh, it's the Phyrexian Horror, Phyrexian Rager. Cool. And it's got on Earth. This is cool. This is a callback to the original Phyrexian Rager. This is a scrapwork one slapped together. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the ones that we saw of this later come in Apocalypse, right? So this is earlier, and they're just doing what they can with what they've got. That's cool. All right, then we've got, oh, Takesha's dig site. This is where the brothers went. This is where they originally, like, lived with Takesha. Taps for a colorless, three and tap at surveil one, and sent by the noble parents to toughen up and learn something of the world's past, Urza and Mishra instead uncovered Teriyasair's future. This is not true. They weren't sent by their parents to toughen up. Basically, Urza's dad knew that Urza's mom didn't like the kids and he was dying. So he gave them a letter and sent them out there because the mother was just not going to give him any of the inheritance and they were going to end up out on the street. But Wizards of the Coast doesn't want to tell the truth about that. So like, the noble parents, they don't want to say, uh, Urza's mom was a complete piece of garbage, but his, his dad was okay, so they got you know it, it, it doesn't track very well so they're rewriting history here this is most assuredly not how it went they weren't sent to toughen up and learn something of the world's past although maybe the dad side wanted that to happen but their mom did not want them but that's not going to fit into what wizards wants to talk about so we're going to move on to the next card we've got battlefield butcher three mana one four human soldier five mana each opponent loses two life. This ability costs one less to activate for each creature card in your graveyard. Eh, okay. So does any more giant metal monsters want to try their luck? I'm just getting warmed up. Okay. Then we've got Spot Thopter. Eight mana, four or five flying with prototype. It costs four mana to make it a two, three. And it's a flyer when it enters the battlefield scry where X is its power. This is... Uh, I don't know, pretty underwhelming in anything but like a limited format. But I guess if you're playing draft, bro, you got like a four or five flyer for eight. That's pretty wild. You're going to scry for eight, bam, but eh, pretty underwhelming, let's be real. Uh, what's this? Involuntary cooldown. Four mana sorcery. Tap up to two target artifacts or creatures. Put two stun counters on them. All right, it's a blue stun card. And the flavor text says, Back to the Ivory Tower! This won't hold for long! They are third path Cryomancer. Yeah, they had like Cryomancers now? They definitely. Teferi had to have brought magic back. That must be. They must have been like, okay, magic happened earlier in the Brothers' War now. And that's fine. That makes for a more interesting story. Oh! It's Mishra! We got Mishra! Yeah, 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 yeah! Claimed by Geeks Mishra! What up, man? Oh, at one of his most tragic points right here. One black, one red, and two for a legendary Phyrexian human artificer. He's already been turned, claimed by the demon Geeks, turned into more than man, but at the same time, less. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and... Yo, come on, man. Come on, bro. There's a big, like, you see that, guys? You see that line? Look at that scratch across. Come on, bro. Come on, wizards. This ain't cool, man. This, this, they, I, I come on. All right. Whatever. Okay, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures. If Mishra claimed by Gix and a creature named Phyrexian Dragon Engine are attacking... You can, and you both own and control them. Exile them, meld them into Mishra, lost to Phyrexia. It enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. Grrr, and you can see Mishra in the artwork, man. He's Phyrexified. He's got these crazy claws that look super heated. He's got the weak stone in his other hand with power coalescing around it in this crazy sort of miasma poison environment. And his eyes and mouth are glowing with an unearthly light. So is his shoulder, man. That's crazy. Crazy. And then on the other side, bum 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 bum. Yeah, the top half of the dragon. There he is, man. He's fused with the dragon engine. This is what Urza saw barreling like, bro. Urza's weeping. He's weeping tears for his brother. He's bleeding into the Silex in front of him. 
and this is what's barreling towards him. This is what his brothers turned into. Man, they are delivering the goods with this set. That is so good. All right, Astro Cornucopia, Triple X, enters the battlefield, X counters on it, and taps for X mana of whatever color you choose when you tap it. That's all right, artwork's amazing, right? That looks really cool, not too shabby. And then a counter. Now, let's see what's next. I want more, brothers, more goodness, please. Okay. We have, oh, we saw you. We saw you. Takeja's Onulet. Oh, this is a Beef Boy Onulet. Onulet was three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. This one is five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. When it leaves, oh, it doesn't have to go to the graveyard. When it leaves the battlefield, gain two life. So if you bounce it, or, oh, because it's got unearth. So when you unearth it, when it exiles, you gain two life as well. All right. I mean, that's gigantic. Look at Takeja. Look at that Onulet. This is not how they describe them at all. Things must have gone back and changed. Because look at that. That's huge. That's nutty. Oh, wow. All right, then we've got Depth Charge Colossus, 9 mana, 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah, like Urza only had one Colossus. It was a Colossus of Sardia. Hey, wait a minute. 9 mana, untap it, just like the original. Doesn't untap during your untap step, but you can put it out as a 6-6 six, six for 6. This is crap. This is absolute garbage, bro. Are you kidding me? 9 mana for a 9-9. Nine, nine, like, this is trash. But look, you can pay 6, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. You still doesn't untap unless you pay 9, though. Carbo! Artwork is crazy. Look at the size, man. Look at the scale. The water raining down. It came up out of the water. Sorry, bro. I was just LARPing as Godzilla. Uh, oh, Mishra's Domination. One red and one enchantment. As long as you control enchanted creature, it gets plus two, plus two. Otherwise, it can't block. Power radiated from the weak stone, binding the dragon engine to Mishra's command. There you go. Look at the dragon engine bowing down in subservience like a dog to Mishra. He's got the weak stone power emanating out of it into the dragon engine, forcing submission. That's awesome. This is a great story spotlight card, bro. Then you've got Argothian Sprite. This is a nice callback to the Argothian Pixies from the antiqui uh, Antiquity set. Yeah, one black and one, no, one green and one. Two, two. It can't be blocked by artifact creatures. Seven mana to put two plus one plus one counters on it. So that's funky, you know? Make the exhaust vent smaller next time. It's like, there you go. He's going in, ripping your stuff up. That makes sense. The sprites going in and messing up machines was totally happening. Then we got the power plant worker. Gets three mana plus two plus two. If you control creatures... Oh, this is the other one of those. So instead he gets... Plus one, plus one. Oh, you put two plus one, plus one counters on them. So either get plus two, plus two, or two plus one, plus one counters if you have the full triad. Five mana, and he's a four, four. That's obviously draft, whatever. Then you got Ashnod's Intervention. Yes, man! Okay, so technically, this artwork doesn't really represent what happens in the story, but trying to represent what happens in the story would be really difficult to do on a card, right? You have the situation where Tano's here, he's been imprisoned, and Ashnod helps him by leaving him all the stuff that he needs to create her magical staff and escape. But you can't really show that on the card properly, so instead it just shows her like looking around and handing him what he needs. But she actually did it way, way more, she did it in a way that was way more clever and deserves way more credit than this, but would be impossible to encapsulate in a card properly, so it's completely forgiven. Especially with the flavor text where she calls Thanos Duck. She refers to him as Duck and Duckling, and she's a bit older and a lot wiser, a lot more pragmatic and cruel, but also has a soft spot in her heart for him. She's not a terrible human being, but she's also not a good human being. She is one of the most compelling characters in the Brothers War. Flavor text says, listen, Duck. Gix is everywhere, playing every side. Mishra won't listen, but perhaps Urza will, right? And the card actually is one black until end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and when this creature dies, uh, it put it in exile, or would put in exile from the battlefield, return it to its owner's hand. Can you tell how excited I am? I'm almost tripping over my words, seeing this stuff actually represented on full-on cards. Like, I'm legit gonna boot up Arena and get a full collection of this set. I already decided it. Like, I haven't played Arena in months, but Wizards has found the key to get me back. This set has such genuine effort. Like, it's so genuinely faithful to the original story in so many ways that I am astounded in an incredibly pleasing way. My friends, this is so awesome. Okay. On we go. Epic Confrontation. We've seen you. Ashnod's Harvester. Two mana, three one. When it attacks, exile target card from a graveyard. And it's got on Earth. All right. 
Uh, arms race, one red and three enchantment. You can put an artifact from your graveyard, uh, from your hand onto the battlefield. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, okay. It's like a, it's like a really expensive sneak attack for artifacts. You want it good, fast, or cheap. You can't have all three. Come on, wizards. There's, there's, a, there's a quote from the guy who's in charge of the company who legit talks about, like, they say you can't have good, fast, and cheap, but I like to think we have all three when the card quality was the worst ever. I don't want to see that referenced on flavor text. Okay. Mass production. Six mana sorcery create four 1-1 one, one soldier tokens. That's a lot of mana to make them. I mean, six? That's rough. Artwork's funky, though. Look at that, man. You got Urza there. You got the constructs going on. That's awesome. I need an army, not a masterpiece. Accelerate output, whatever it takes. Urza wasn't about making things beautiful. He was about making things functional. That's very true. Uh, Simeon Simalacrum. What is this? Three mana, two, one. It's an ape. When it enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. So it could come in as a four, three on its own. And it's God on Earth for green. Two green and two. Funky. It's a green align Simeon ape creature. What? Weird, man. Wait, what's going on in the artwork? What? Oh, it's, he charged through all those. Okay, I guess that's because he's so beefy. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, funky. Funky. All right, then we've got, hey, the Ivory Tower, where the Arch Mandrite and Herkel and Felden and Lauren, everybody was. This location was a big part of the story as well. And this artifact used to be huge back in the day. One mana, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand, minus four. You could get a lot of life from this. It's nutty. The flavor text says, ringed by Whitestone, Teresia was a city of scholarship and knowledge, where magic promised a brighter future to a world devoured by artifice. Well, magic was discovered here. Oh, so cool. Look at that. And it's the sketch version with, oh, I love it, man. I love this. This is so good. All right. Then we've got a forest. Look at that big hulking construct. I love how it's framed by these trees trunks. Look at its immensity. It's almost like a walking castle. Like that's a little drawbridge and you could live in there. And then we've got to put your own imagination in here with the construct in the back. All right. Cool. There's still more to go. Oh, I can't even believe it, man. I can't believe all the awesomeness. What else do we have? We have a Goring Warplow, a six mana prototype, five, four, or you can play it as a, um, for two black and a one as a one, one, and it's got death touch. Oh, okay. You know what? That's not too shabby as far as common goes. It's okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, military discipline, one white enchantment, flash, enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, creature gets first strike till end of turn, it gets plus one, plus zero. Okay. All right, shows a building and some troops. Doesn't do nothing for me. Uh, coastal bulwark, two mana, one, three, artifact, wall, defender. Gets plus two, plus zero as long as you have an island. Two and tap, surveil one. Eh, as far as blockers go in a limited format, that's okay. The artwork's pretty crazy. What's going on here? So some kind of like... Sea fortification? That's nuts, man. That doesn't feel like that's that, that that that's what they had? I don't know about that. Scrap work mutt. Two mana, two one. When it enters the battlefield, discard a card, you may. Uh if you do, draw a card and it unearths for a red and one. Okay, so we've got a ton of these like creatures that have spell like effects that you can unearth for a second go. Eh, Alright. Then we got Boulder Branch Golem, a big old seven casting cost, prototype for four with one green golem, six, five, or three, three. When it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its power. Oh, that's underwhelming. Uh, Clay Revenant. Oh, cool. What's this? One mana, one, two, enters the battlefield tapped. One black and two, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, Tano's built his clay statues for durability, not knowing they'd keep fighting long after the war. Oh, cool. So these are like, these are like the corpses almost of the original clay statues and they reform themselves and keep going. It's a different variation of their generation and they look somewhat like the, oh yeah, that's cool, man. That's some good flavor. All right. Then we've got unleash shell. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Five mana instant deals five damage to our creature planeswalker, two damage to that permanence controller. All right. Okay. Raise to the ground. One red and two sorcery. Can't be countered. Destroy target artifact. If it's a mana value is one or less, draw a card. That's all right. The three mana though. Uh, flavor text says 
First one, then a second, then a third of the ivory towers fell to the invaders. They moved in a circle around the city like an apocalyptic clock. That's cool, man. See this, the ivory towers we're looking at? Here's that whole place getting taken down. Crazy. Looks great. Uh, ravenous Gigamole. Oh, it's the Molhor. I haven't seen this. One black and three, two, three. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a creature card from among them, the ones milled, into your hand. If you don't, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Oh. Okay. Uh, Sentinel Stalwart. One green, one, one. Tap it to tap an un... Tap an untapped artifact a creature you control out of mana of any color. Oh, Springleaf Drum Person. Okay. All right. The Endless Grind of the Brothers' War had fouled Teresia's land and blackened its skies. Argos defenders were determined to protect their isle from the same fate. Well, that's understandable. Didn't go that well, though. <laughs> oh, the fall of Krug! Look at it! Krug has fallen! Two red and four sorcery. Choose target opponent. Destroy target land that player controls. The fall of Krug deals three damage to that player and one damage to each creature they control. That's awesome. What a great way to recognize the siege of Krug and its destruction. You destroy the land to represent the city getting destroyed and then all the damage to everybody being done because of it. Oh, crazy, man. The flavor text says... As retaliation for the warlord's ambush at the peace summit, Mishra leveled Yosha's capital city. There's so much flavor in these packs. Oh, look at the dragon engine, man. Lording, or just, oh, it's, he's just lording over the entire situation. Just this massive, bellowing, almost demon of destruction. Like yelling into the night. And then you've got these individuals just fleeing crazy. They got Cradle Clear Cutter next. Six mana, three, six. Prototypes for three, one, three. Tap to add wa amount of green equal to its power. Oh, that's funky. I like that. That's pretty neat. It says a thousand years of growth harvested in minutes. All right. Don't know what that means. These are magical golems, I guess. Uh, Pyrrhic Blast. One red and three instant. As an additional cost to cast a spell sack a creature, deals damage equal to the sacked creature's power to any target and draw a card. Four mana is a lot for that, so... I don't know. I don't know. Uh. Oh, it's Mishra! We got another Mishra! Urza's pack is Mishra heavy. One black, one red, and three, four, four legendary human artificer. Mishra, tamer of Makfawa. Permanence you control have ward, sack a permanent. What a great ability. Anytime you want to target something of mine, sack a permanent. Each artifact card in your graveyard has on earth one black, one red, and one. You can get back anything. That's insane, man. That's crazy. Hey, come on. I know you're afraid of Mishra, but don't be. Focus in on him. Yeah, let us see his goodness. So, with the Brotherhood of Gix... What does it say here? With the Brotherhood of Gix whispering in his ear, Mitra's drive to prove himself was slowly twisted into an insatiable hunger for power. The Antiquities War. It's true. And look at him shown here in an earlier step. He's got his uh, Phyrexian hand at this point, but he hasn't been as converted. And you can see the diagrams of it, the sketch. This is an awesome version, man. That's great. Oh, and a millstone. I love this version of the artwork, man, with the, the actual stone that rotates around someone's head, constantly grinding it down the way it grinds your mind down. Yeah, man. That's great. Flavor text. Minds like mountains are never too grand and mighty that they can't be reduced to dust. Very cool. And then you've got a token. So that means we are on to the final pack, my friends. It has been a flavor-filled journey. Let us end it off strong. All right, we saw you, we saw you, we saw you, we saw you, you do, and you. Oh, we haven't seen you. Another story spot, sweet. Machine over matter, one blue and one instant. This spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact creature and return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. The flavor text says, the warlord decreed that only someone who could move the statue would be strong enough to marry the princess. So Urza moved it. That is a very, that is a very straightforward summary. The warlord wanted a gigantic beefy boy to marry his daughter, Kayla. So what he did was he set this gigantic jade statue out 
in the courtyard and said, whoever can move this statue gets the hand of my beautiful princess daughter. So a ton of warriors lined up and tried to lift this. Some of them threw out their backs, some of them crushed their fingers, but none of them succeeded. Urza showed up and asked if it would be permissible for him to move it with the power of his mind. And the warlord basically said he would allow it, but ultimately didn't expect it to succeed. And when it did succeed, the warlord was raging. He actually stormed off, and then Kayla follows him in and is like, what's your problem? And he goes, I don't want my daughter to be married to some little weedy schmuck. I want some big beefy boy marrying you. And he's like, don't you have a problem with him? And then Kayla's like, yo, you don't get to marry me off like a prize pig to some big lunk. And then when some guy does your challenge properly, then you're like, no, 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 no. So Kayla basically holds him to it because ultimately she thinks Urza would be a fine husband. She had met him previously. So this represents that moment. This construct was way more ramshackle and the paving stones actually crushed under its feet it almost fell over so it wasn't quite as epic as this and urza definitely i don't think urza like had this level of garments and whatever but they wanted you to be like check it out it's urza with the staff so definitely notice it's urza so they they took some liberties but ultimately like i'm super super cool with it then we've got giant growth one green tart creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn it's like all right there you go we got an air marshal, one blue and one. Target soldier gets flying until end of turn. Two one. This is really underwhelming. Very underwhelming. Today our blades remember Krug. May the seven brass gods be with us. We look goofy. Okay. Thopter mechanic. One blue and one, two one. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. When it dies, create a one one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Oh, that's sweet, man. That's like pretty solid for a uh, uncommon. Overall, um, like, eh, it's okay. Yeah, the flavor, not too shabby. Then we've got Combat Thresher, seven mana, three, three prototypes for a white and two, one, one, and it's got Double Strike. Oh, guys, did you know I'm friends with the inventor of Double Strike? And he'll actually be taking my place at the MTG Summit later this month. If you haven't got your tickets already, you can use the historian code to do so. All right, boom. We got third path icon iconoclast. One red, one blue for a 2-1. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. That's really solid for a 2-mana two 2-1, two bro. That's great. That's great. This thing just generates 1-1s. One, That's nutty. The artwork is... Uh, oh, look at that, man. Look at his staff. What is going on there? That's crazy. It looks like a crazy sickle. All right. Oh, the rare is Fateful Handoff. Yeah. We got another story spotlight. Man, this is awesome. One black and three, sorcery. Draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature you control. An opponent gains control of that permanent. Get, <clears throat> get the Silex to Urza at any cost. Tell him to fill it with memories of the land. Ashnod to Thanos. So this is near the end. Ashnod smuggles the Silex to Thanos. She basically, since we're not going to get the cards to show it, Lauren ends up getting captured by Ashnod and tortured. And then Ashnod ends up with the Silex and knowledge of it, passes it off because she's afraid of what Mishra will do with it. And also Mishra isn't really willing to listen to her. So she gives it to Thanos and Thanos ends up running off to Urza and handing it off to him. So this is a big point in the story right here. And I just love seeing Thanos and Ashnod together. It makes me happy. And him with the Silex. Like, this is so epic, dude. They did such a good job. After that, Inspiring Statuary, three mana. Non-artifact spells you cast have improvised. You can tap artifacts to make them cheaper. And uh, yeah, that's all right, not too shabby. We got a foil, big fat bodied spider, four mana, two, three, reach death touch. When it dies, put up to one other target card from a graveyard in the bottom of its owner's library. And then we fall off at the end with a Power Stone token. All right, my friends. Well, that was super epic. If you made it all the way through with me, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I absolutely love the Brothers War. And we'll be back with Mishra's pre-release kit. I will see you tonight for a stream where we open more Brothers War on my other YouTube channel, Hatcher. Links on the screen right now. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. Goodbye for now, my friends.